Richard. Let's start there at 5.30. Local 4 defender Hank Winchester broke this story for us last night at 11 p.m. And since then, it sparked anger and a lot of attention. Hank joins us live now from Bloomfield Hills to reveal new information about the police investigation. Hank, where do things stand right now? And that investigation is moving forward. We do know that all parties involved have been interviewed, that this case has now made its way to the prosecutor's office. Prosecutor Jessica Cooper is very diligent and will be taking a close look at exactly what unfolded here on that bus. This morning, instead of being in school with classmates here at Bloomfield Hills Middle School, eighth grader Phoenix Williams was at home, home working to keep up on assignments, too frightened to return to the classroom. I really don't feel safe going back to school at all because both of them are going to be there. Phoenix is talking about the two classmates he videotaped calling him the N-word. They were suspended, but those close to the case say both students returned to class today. The district and Phoenix's mother both contacted police and investigation was launched. Since Phoenix was repeatedly called the N-word, verbally harassed and allegedly threatened that his phone would be broken if he told, some believe these minors may face ethnic intimidation charges. Legal expert Neil Rockine says the video that Phoenix captured helps tell the story. I'm so pleased that this young man had the, the wherewithal to take a video. Because the video tells us that it happened. Now the question is how bad was it? We do know that police interviewed Phoenix, those on board the school bus, including two chaperones and the driver. What did they see? What did they hear? As for the district, the superintendent does say action was taken, but that the punishment will not be revealed. They tout themselves as award winning, and this is a, is a, is a clear black eye on the district's, you know, and the conduct of students within the district. Yeah. And I think that they want it to go away. Our investigation will continue new tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll be talking with a clinical psychologist. She's going to offer insight about how you can talk to your children about this important issue. We're live here tonight in Bloomfield Hills. Hank Winchester, back to you. All right, Hank. Well, let's dig a little deeper now with both Phoenix and his mother. They're standing by with Carmen. Carmen. That's right. Devin Phoenix and his mother, Shanari Williams, join us now. And I want to thank you both for, for coming in. And Phoenix, I've got to tell you how much I admire your courage to Thank come forward you. with this. Most kids would probably rather not do this. And Shanari, I know, uh, Shanari, I know that you have to admire him too. Where do you want this to go from here though? Yeah, well, let me just first say we are so grateful to the community and for, you know, Channel 4 and just the outpouring of support we've received from other parents and just the community at large. And what we're just simply asking is that they take a no tolerance policy to these types of behaviors. We've seen it happen recently on the university level, and they did a good job of sending the message that this will not be tolerated. It's not okay. How could this have been handled differently, do you think? Um, I could have gotten up and tried to hit both of the kids. You th probably thought about that, didn't you? I, I really did think I about agree. doing that, but then I realized that I didn't know what was going to happen after that, and I uh, was worried that it was going to somehow get turned back on me as me being the aggressor or the person who started everything. So how long did you suffer with this? Phoenix before telling your mom or even letting the school know, the teacher, for example. Oh, about the incident? Mm -hmm. uh, just right after it happened and I got off of the bus I, and I got in the car and my nana had drove me home, I had started telling That's her about great. it. <laughs> She's here too, we should tell you. And mom, when did you learn about it? Sadly, I was uh, out of town on business and uh, received a phone call Friday evening. They had a festival performance from the school um, and then the bus right there and back. And so I received the call once my mom picked him up and he was totally distraught, upset, um, and she, he forwarded me a copy of the, the video footage. And as you can imagine, I was, I was deeply grieved, especially to know I wasn't even in town to Absolutely. do much um, and that he had just experienced this on a bus that had two adult parent chaperones and a bus driver did and no know? one interfered or the helped. parents on the bus did they know what happened no they, they had didn't no idea okay no but now idea. everybody knows everybody knows so what will it take Phoenix I know you're not in school right now you're at home what will it take to get you back in the classroom and back to 
being with your friends and your classmates? Well, I would like for both of the students to be expelled and for the staff and the parents and the students to also go through training in diversity and I would like to see a no tolerance for um, racism and racial Absolutely. Uh, intimidation and things of that sort. And have you heard from the parents of the boys? Uh, actually, one of the parents uh, did reach out to say, you know, that she was very sorry that the incident had happened. Sure. We haven't had an opportunity to, to talk. The other family was not interested in any one-on-ones and kind of spoke to their attorney. Um, I guess the most troubling thing is everyone here is admitting that this happened. It's not a question, um, but the problem is that they don't feel like it's necessary to do anything more than just give these boys a few days off a good firm talking to mm -hmm. and send them on their way and it's not a good idea to send that message to Phoenix and other students like him moreover not for those students because if they find out that they're not going to be met with stiff penalty they're going to high school next year and what you would know. you what advice Phoenix would you have for students who might find themselves in a similar situation uh, my advice would pretty much just be try and somehow record it, get some type of evidence, uh, and t tell somebody that this is going on. Don't uh, keep it hidden or secret. Try and tell your parent or an adult that's nearby or a teacher. All right. Well, you certainly articulate yourself very well and certainly your feelings, and I know this has to be painful for you, but uh, it looks like you're, you're kind of moving in the right direction here as far as getting it behind you. And certainly we wish you both the best. And thank you so much for being so brave and standing up for yourself. And Mom, we all want to protect our children. Yes. And so I know how you feel, too. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for that. And we're just trying to make sure people hashtag uh, no tolerance for hate crime and justice, the number four, Phoenix, um, as well. We've got a huge Facebook campaign. And we've received a lot of support. We are just very grateful to everyone uh, for their support and love. All right. All the best to you both. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.